over the world. Species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On the open plains, in the oceans, and under desert skies. All are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the uplands of America to the wilds of Africa, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. Hippos spend three quarters of their lives in water. They can even sleep underwater. A unique reflex brings them up to breathe without waking up. So if a hippo's getting out of his bath, it's going to be for something deadly serious. It's the dry season. Hippos from different pods cram into one evaporating stretch of river. Pods can live side by side, as long as no one upsets the hierarchy. But one gate crasher has his sights on the other pod's females. For their boss, that's grounds for a fight. He forces the three ton upstart back into the crowd. One giant surge turns the tables. The boss makes for the shore. But he's not retreating. This fight is now at DEFCON 1. The gate crasher keeps coming. The boss makes the most of new terrain. More traction means more pushing power. In hippo law, the biggest jaw wins. And the boss's gape has the edge. The gate crasher drops his head in defeat. He's learned the hard way. Get the boss out of his bath, and you face three tons of trouble. Young lions learn to hunt on the job. But if they don't keep up with the kill crew, they can be killed. M. Pumalanga, South Africa. The Marthley pride tackles its toughest prey, a Cape buffalo. experienced matriarch holds down the back end. Two-year-old little bro takes the sharp end. Oh. 
but it goes horribly wrong. Lions are not natural-born killers. Lionesses teach youngsters to hunt by just 15 months old. They become expert killers by two and a half. But over three quarters of them won't even reach this age. A quarter of the buffalo's horn skewers the rookie's armpit. Around a foot deep, One big swing of the head could prove fatal. The horn spears through tough lion hide and penetrates the bicep, an injury that could lead to fatal infection. Worse still, his own body weight, 240 pounds, pulls him down onto the horn. If it severs an artery, he will bleed to death. But it can take hours for a lion team to kill a buffalo. And first, they must haul down almost 2,000 pounds of adrenaline-fueled beast. The horn digs closer towards the artery. But the rookie sticks to his job and sinks two and a half inch canines into the buffalo's neck. The buffalo thrashes desperately. And lets the youngster off the hook. He's in pain, but his work is done. The buffalo's exhausted. And now the matriarch can finish him off. The rookie's wounded, but it's not fatal. And his weight helped drag down the buffalo. So it wasn't plan A, but the team secures over 1,800 pounds of beef to feed the pride. Predators are designed by their environment. Venture into their domain, and it's get out fast, or fast become lunch. Each year, tiger sharks migrate to the North Pacific. They come for one reason. Albatross fledglings. Adult albatross are 70 mile an hour flying machines. But they don't start out like this. On a Hawaiian beach, six month old fledglings prepare to fly the nest. Launching into the wind gives them lift. But it doesn't always work. And waiting at the end of their runway is one of the ocean's most capable killers. She's a 13-foot killing machine. Rows of serrated teeth effortlessly saw through hard turtle shell. Favorite snack. So time.
tiny fledglings are easy pickings. Tiger sharks have a blind spot right in front of their nose. But they have an ingenious solution. Tiger sharks have electroreceptors on their heads called ampullae of Lorenzini. Skin pores filled with a jelly-like substance embedded in the skin connect to receptor cells. They can detect weak electrical signals created by nearby animals as they move, allowing this albatross-seeking missile to zero in on its prey. Albatross lay just one egg a year. So this little guy is precious. But learning to fly with a seven-foot wingspan is a big ask. A tiger shark senses a splash and moves in on her target. The tiny chick can't see her. Never underestimate an underdog. This albatross chick stranded in tiger shark territory. It needs stronger winds to get airborne. It should be game over. But the shark's own bow wave pushes her prey to safety. The chick wants to fly, but can't quite make it. This chick's no easy target. He's gonna fight back. He unleashes his only weapon. A shark's eye is a rare weak spot. But she has a killer defense. As she opens her jaw to bite, a specialized muscle slides a third eyelid across the eye. Known as a nictitating membrane, it forms an effective protective shield, but renders the shark temporarily blind as it attacks. And that split second is time enough to escape. This albatross is off the menu, for now. But for the shark, there's plenty more birds in the sea. In the wild, there's no fast track to success. Climb the ladder, and it's a rumble on every rung. Bighorn rams may be sheep, but they can fight for 24 hours straight. They stage brutal playoffs for mating rights, where only the winner secures their bloodline. The losers, they just spill blood. It's rutting season in Canada's Rocky Mountains. In these parts, over a hundred rams compete. It's tough enough if you're part of the gang. But this Casanova 
is a stranger. He wants to take on the dominant male. But first, he must beat his lieutenants. All three of them. Even against three, Casanova holds his ground. Double-layered skulls protect their brains from being crushed. A lieutenant gears up for a ferocious assault. And delivers a 40-mile-an-hour strike. Inches from blinding Casanova's right eye. Their reinforced skulls are built to withstand front impact. But a hard enough side smash can kill them. Bloodied, Casanova fights back. Unable to match his stamina, the lieutenants give up. Casanova's exhausted. But one ram still stands in his way, and he is the toughest of them all. Bighorn rams can endure more than five clashes an hour. And after conquering three subordinates, this outsider now faces the dominant male. His seasoned opponent takes the high ground. This builds more battering momentum and greater impact force. It's like being hit by a baseball bat at 80 miles an hour. Casanova faces an uphill battle, but goes full power. The force cracks his opponent's horn. But as a weapon, it's no less deadly. After a brutal two-tiered tournament, one last blow from the big guy is too much for Casanova. He doesn't win the right to mate, but incredibly wins a place in the gang. When the prey is deadly, even the fastest predators need a backup plan. All-you-can-eat buffets don't come much bigger than the annual wildebeest migration. As over a million of them trek almost 2,000 miles. There's more protein on the move here than anywhere else on land. Just one wildebeest kill is a half a million calorie feast for this male cheetah. But it's risky, because cheetahs are fragile. They're lightweight for speed. A cheetah's oversized heart and lungs race oxygen around its body, so it can accelerate from zero to 60 miles an hour in under three seconds. But cheetahs are short distance runners. 
So this cat targets the runt, the quickest kill. But those 30-inch horns can still pierce his gut. One cheetah has long odds against prey this size. But he's not alone. Little brother joins the attack. The ambush trap is set. But the odds change again. 600 pounds of wildebeest can crush a light-boned cat. It splits the gang. But they round again on the first target. Ambush strategy works. Even the run yields around 500 pounds of protein rich meat, enough to keep two cheetahs alive until the next hunt. They call this the animal kingdom. But the kings don't always rule the roost. <laughs> In the jungles of Madagascar lurks a mysterious creature that can kill with its farts alone and turn people into zombies with its poisonous lick before disemboweling them. Or so says local legend. The creature is the Fusa, and the reality is just as strange. It has retractable claws like a cat, a monkey-like tail as long as its body, and hind legs that can rotate 180 degrees around the ankles to climb down trees head first. Fusas are rare. But no one told the females. She's extremely hard to please, and she'll fight any males she doesn't like. She only mates once a year, and often in the same carefully chosen tree. A hot-blooded male is desperate to mate. He's got one shot. And if he doesn't cut it, she'll attack with unbelievable violence. Madagascar's Fusa females only mate with the most competitive males. So this suitor better have the right stuff. <laughs> Uh, He's bold. But she's still not impressed. Females use weaker branches to lure rejects into dangerous territory. But retractable claws swing him away from trouble. He gets the message. Quitters are not her type. At least those swiveling ankles give him a fast getaway. But there's another suitor on the scene. And it seems 
He's got the right moves. No animal can truly be tamed. But even the wildest beasts have their rules. High noon in Mustang Alley. An outlaw wants the sheriff's mayor. And he'll shoot to kill. Over 70,000 Mustangs maraud across America's Wild West. Settlers brought them here 500 years ago. But now they run feral in small bands. When a mare gives birth to a foal, she'll be ready to mate again almost immediately. And this outsider is desperate to start his own bloodline. But every band has a dominant male who keeps the law. And he sees the outlaw muscle in. The outsider draws first. They rear in a show of aggression. But these are mere pistols. The most devastating weapon is at the back. When a horse gallops, its forelegs work more like props while the more powerful muscles of the hind legs provide most of the propulsion. And they can kick as hard as they can run. But with a foal in the firing line, the sheriff can't draw the big guns yet. The foal is ushered to safety. Sheriff aims with both barrels. It's a misfire. But 1,200 pounds of Mustang sends the outlaw reeling. A darker horse, the sheriff's deputy, comes guns ablazing. But the outlaw turns on him. Subordinate males will defend their superiors. And come hell or high water, this deputy has the sheriff's back. The outlaw returns alone to his own band. Outgunned and outmuscled. Good things come in small packages, but so do bad things. The Sonoran Desert, Arizona, where temperatures can soar to almost 120 degrees. By day, it's an empty wasteland. But when the sun goes down, it has a killer nightlife. A grasshopper mouse is out late, hungry for a midnight snack. At less than a pound, he's a lightweight in a neighborhood of deadly heavyweights. This is the giant desert hairy scorpion, an armed assassin.
His sting injects toxic venom that destroys his victim's nervous system and paralyzes them. Once bathed in enzymes, the prey is pulverized into a scorpion smoothie. The assassin spies a tasty treat. Grasshopper mouse. But this little fellow is one surprisingly tough hombre. A giant desert hairy scorpion spies a mousy meal. But the mouse won't take it. The scorpion unleashes a toxic jab. Dead between the ears. It should spell lights out. Inside the bulb of the tail are two venom glands filled with a cocktail of neurotoxins. By contracting muscles inside the tail, the scorpion squeezes the venom through a hole in the stinger which targets the nervous system. It would paralyze any normal prey. But this mouse has a secret defense. Thick fur and skin that the stinger can't penetrate. So Mighty Mouse is still in the game. In this town, the grasshopper mouse is the predator. Razor-sharp teeth make quick work of the scorpion's exoskeleton. The grasshopper mouse is merciless. And if they can't find prey, They'll even eat each other. Even in the quietest corners of the natural world, where survival depends on togetherness, carnal instincts can turn peace into war. Welcome to Hell. Hell Valley, on the Japanese island of Honshu. In winter, temperatures plummet to minus four degrees Fahrenheit. While volcanic waters surge up through the frozen ground to form warm pools. For snow monkeys, it's heaven. Japanese macaques beat the cold by soaking in nature's own hot tubs. Under the watchful eye of this dominant male, the Zen master, peace and harmony reign. But long after the snow thaws, when mating season begins, heaven turns to hell again. Rogue males arrive, desperate to mate. This wild-eyed stranger has only one thing on his mind, a nursing mom. While a mother's nursing, she won't mate. So the outsider turns on the infant.
mom will defend it with her life. The little one escapes. Mom's older daughter tries to help, but can only watch her fall. The big male sinks in his dagger-like canines. He pins her. There's no escape. When a snow monkey mom is held down by a heavier male, there's little she can do. But the Zen master troop leader sees all. And as the intruder tries to flee, he turns Kung Fu monkey. The master's bigger. And so are his daggers. The intruder must choose between ferocious fangs and the river rapids. No contest. The intruder quits the valley. The Zen master returns peace to the mountain. And hell turns back to heaven. For nature's hunters, the shift in seasons can be a deadly game changer. The river otter is an expert predator in the underwater world. But when lakes and rivers freeze over, Otters must leave the water to hunt prey. In the open, they're vulnerable to their predators. Islands is adapted for underwater hunting, make them short-sighted on land. So it's harder to spot enemies. Like the coyote. Cunning opportunists, these killers like to target rodents and beavers. But when food is scarce, they form bigger packs to catch larger prey. They rely on highly developed hearing and smell. And this coyote has picked up a trail A mom and daughter. Otters make dens underground. But this pair is out on the hunt. Coyotes can run at up to 40 miles an hour. The front runner homes in on the youngster. Mom races in to distract the hunters. And it works. She can't match their speed. But she can outmaneuver them. An otter's skeleton is designed for agility. It has an elongated torso with six articulated sections and no clavicle bones at the shoulders. The otter can undulate its body to propel itself fast through the water. Those skills work on land, too. When the youngster flees, mom's on her own. But she's smarter than they think.
they try to surround her. And sink bite after bite. But she saves her best trick for last. Disappearing. She leaves a bloody trail. But that's all the coyotes get from the wily otter. For some species, the wildest battles aren't always in the wild. The tranquil suburbs of Southern California offer prime real estate for a western fence lizard. Meet the lord of the manor. This crack in a wall is his home and shelter, so he'll protect it to the death. A stranger strays onto his manor. His battle-scarred tail spells trouble. He's a serial offender. He's lost part of his tail in a previous battle. Every vertebra running through the tail has a special fracture point. If an enemy grabs the tail, the lizard constricts muscles that will detach the tail at any of these weak points. So it can escape further harm. The tail will eventually grow back, but only as an inflexible piece of cartilage. Despite the intruder's inferior tail, he's still bent on a break-in. There are two ways this can go. To deter enemies and avoid a costly fight, Fence lizards start with a display, a set of push-ups, the intruder won't back down. With everything to lose, the lord of the manor goes nuclear. A lizard's tail is vital for balance. So the intruder's less flexible tail disadvantages him. The intruder makes for the mansion door and targets his opponent's tail. But the homeowner's healthy tail strikes back. won't quit his manor and bites another chunk off the intruder's tail. This house is not for sale and the homeless intruder pays the price for trespassing.